and welcome to the International We Love You Foundation's Blood Drive webinar. My name is Dwayne Ford and I'll be your host for this evening. For those of you who have participated in We Love You events before, welcome back. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome, we're happy to have you. Whether you're a returning participant or a first timer, I'd like to start this webinar off by explaining what We Love You is all about. The International We Love You Foundation was established by Chairwoman Jang Gil Ja in South Korea in 2001. Since then, the International We Love You Foundation has carried out various initiatives all throughout the world. The Chairwoman established the foundation to share a mother's love with the global village. Just as mothers care for all the members of the family, the International We Love You Foundation takes care of all people throughout the global village. Currently, the International We Love You Foundation which is a non-governmental organization associated with the United Nations Department of Global Communications, we carry out initiatives throughout 60 countries. To learn more about our various initiatives and the work that we do, go to our website, which is we love you, the letter U, USA.org. That's we love you, USA.org. Now, on to today's main subject, which is about blood donations. Currently, there is a critical and growing need for blood in the United States. For this, the We Love You Foundation has and will continue to host blood drives throughout the country. But in order to present about this need and in order to talk about what we need to think about and in order to prepare to give blood donations, we have two special guests. You might remember our first special guest from our monthly health and wellness newsletter. If you're not receiving our weekly newsletters, be sure to subscribe by going on our website. But without further ado, I'd love to introduce naturopathic doctor and founder of Harmony Health and Wellness, Dr. Monique Bowman. Welcome, Dr. Monique. Hi, hello, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Monique. We're so glad to have you. To start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and also explain your take on tonight's topic for our audience? Yes, certainly. Uh, I'm a licensed naturopathic doctor, and I earned my Bachelor's of, of Science in Psychology at the City College of New York. 
And then I went on to pursue a doctorate in naturopathy at the, college, at the University of Bridgeport College of Naturopathic Medicine uh, in 2011, where I earned my uh, ND degree. And since then, I've been helping both men and women uh, battling hormone issues like thyroid, uh, also severe fatigue and, and gut issues uh, by uncovering uh, some of the dietary and lifestyle factors that have influenced their gut dysfunction and hormone health. And as far as my opinion goes on tonight's topic, it's so important to really impress on everyone how dire the uh, donations are uh, as, as it regards to um, donating blood, since blood is very unique in that it's only manufactured within the body and, and it's not able to be produced outside of the body. So it's so important that we bring awareness to this subject so that people can uh, feel motivated and encouraged to donate blood. Thank you so much, Dr. Monique. I think it was really insightful to mention how blood is only manufactured inside of the body and not outside, meaning that whenever anyone needs blood, the only way for them to receive it is if someone else donates. Thank you for your insights. Now I'd like to welcome our second guest speaker. She's a physician assistant at a practice in Orange County, New York. Please welcome Valerie Mealy. Welcome, Valerie. Hi, everybody. My name is Valerie. I'm a physician assistant and uh, currently working in family medicine. Um, in family medicine, not only do we um, deal with preventative medicine, but we also deal with acute and chronic diseases. Um, I've also personally been a blood donor since the age of 16, and I agree with everything Dr. Monique said about the importance of blood donation and how we do rely on the grace and the giving of people that we don't know in order to help save lives. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Valerie. We're really, really happy to have you. I, I like that you mentioned how through blood donations, you can help someone that you don't even know. It's a really selfless act, and it, therefore it's really admirable and honorable for those who do participate in it. Now, I'd like to direct my first question to Dr. Monique. Dr. Monique, can you talk to us about what is the importance of blood donation? Yes, uh, so blood donations are important because there are so many instances where any one of us can actually become um, on the list of, of needing and requiring a blood transfusion or a donation from a generous donor, uh, such as in childbirth or emergencies like uh, emergency surgeries or accidents, uh, things uh, such as like, um, uh, I'm sorry, childbirth, but also um, patients who are battling cancer, uh, burns even require blood transfusion. So uh, this is really important because, because the blood cannot be manufactured anywhere, it, it has to be given. Um, giving blood is really important because in such a small act, you can really uh, do so much good. And it's more than just a gift of, of donating, like doing a, a kind deed by donating, but you're actually saving lives. So uh, I think it's really important uh, for people to understand that you know, your 10 or 15 minute uh, blood draw to donate blood can actually save a life and change a life. Also, uh, winter and summer months are the times when we can see a dip in donations of blood. Uh, part of the reason being that in the winter time, sometimes there may be inclement weather conditions that make it kind of treacherous for donors to make it to uh, donation sites. Uh, but also, too, this is a time when we can see an increase in upper respiratory infections, cold and flus. And so this may change a donor's eligibility status to be able to donate blood at that moment in time. And so being turned away for possibly being um, ineligible due to a, a cold or flu or an infection, a fever, um, can be disheartening and discouraging. And so we can lose some, some momentum in donations at this time for this reason. Um, summertime is an interesting time because that's also an opportunity for colds and flus to kind of be rampant at, at different times. Um, but 
mostly I think part of the reason why we can see a, a dip in donations is because at this time a lot of people are out and about, the weather's really nice and, and comfortable. Uh, so we see people partaking in more risky or adventurous activities that may <laughs> cause them to swap uh, status from being donor and end up uh, on the recipient end of things. So these are just some potential reasons why um, we might see a decline at that time. Thank you so much, Dr. Monique. I can see how the concerns that you mentioned and addressed uh, really highlight the need and the value of blood donations and the importance of them. My next question is for Valerie. With someone who has such an extensive medical background and a history of donating blood yourself, can you explain to us a little bit about who is eligible and who's ineligible to donate blood? And also how often should someone donate blood? Sure, no problem. So donors, especially um, in New York State, it can vary from state to state, can be at least 16 years old. If they're 16, they need a parent's consent form filled out. Um, anybody over the age of 17, as long as they meet the health requirements, can donate. So by meeting the health requirements, um, it differs a little between male and female, but you have to meet a minimum height, a minimum weight, um, ideally be well hydrated and eat beforehand so you feel well to donate. Um, you also have to have a normal hemoglobin level. So hemoglobin is the component in our red blood cells that helps to transfer oxygen around the body. If those levels are too low, then not only are you not able to donate, but you also want to make sure that you take care of yourself and you end up eating more iron-rich foods so you can produce more hemoglobin within your body. The other thing is, um, so you can donate whole blood, which is what most people do when they, they donate blood, every 56 days. Depending on other types of blood that you donate would also depend on how frequently you can donate. Valerie, that was really interesting. I never considered my hemoglobin levels and how important those are in order to be able to donate blood. So I'll make sure the next time I participate in one of our We Love You blood drives, then I'll eat a big bowl of spinach the night before. Uh, Valerie, as a follow-up, I just wanted to ask, how long would it take a body or like my body to replenish the blood that was lost after a donation? And are there any health benefits to donating blood? Sure. So by donating blood, um, you're not only giving part of your blood to somebody else who can need it, but it does, um, does cause the body to replenish those blood cells. Um, if you're donating whole blood, so that is bl um, blood that's not spun down and taken for um, Typically, the reason why everybody is supposed to wait 56 days between blood donation is ca it can take four to six weeks for your body to replenish the red blood cells. Um, if you're solely donating plasma, typically about 24 hours after you donate, um, your body will replenish the plasma. Another option for blood donation is what they call double red or power red donation. With that, what the, you, you're attached to a machine that will take the blood from your body, it'll spin it down, and it'll only take the red blood cells. Um, in this process, you're donating twice the amount of red blood cells you would with a uh, whole blood donation. So because of this, typically donors need to wait anywhere between 14 to 16 weeks be to be able to donate again because we want to make sure that you have enough red blood cells in your body for yourself before you can donate for somebody else. Thanks, Valerie. I didn't think about the difference in time that it would take for the body to replenish and to be able to donate again, depending on the type of donation that was done. But that was really interesting. Uh, now I'm gonna turn it back to Dr. Monique. Now, Dr. Monique, I love reading your monthly health and wellness tips. And I wanted to turn it back to you because on February 19th, the We Love You Foundation, we will be hosting blood drives in New York, Maryland, and Delaware which I also plan on participating in. So I wanted to ask for myself and all of our viewers, can you share with us maybe three tips for anyone looking to donate? And also, is there anything special that our listeners should be doing in order to prepare for blood donation? Oh, certainly. Um, so definitely you wanna make sure that before your uh, blood donation, you wanna make sure your blood is moving really well, your, your blood is fluid, you have, um, you have a decrease in diuretic use, so 
I'm speaking specifically about coffee. Uh, so you want to cut back on your coffee intake leading up to the days uh, before the blood drive. So that way um, you're not dehydrated and you come uh, to donate with, you know, feeling really good uh, being hydrated. So things like uh, coconut water, uh, also uh, juicy fruits and vegetables like celery, watermelon, and cucumber are really good to uh, help you hydrate efficiently um, in, in preparation for the blood drive, uh, as well as eating iron-rich foods like Valerie said, so your spinach, your organ meats, your red meat, as well as uh, beans, nuts, and seeds. Uh, those things also, uh, molasses, one of my favorites, uh, is really rich in minerals and iron. So uh, it'll make sure that your 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 blood is fluid and, and moving and uh, and then it's uh, you're eligible to donate. There's also one other thing I wanted to share uh, too in preparation for the blood uh, donation. It, this is a mistake that I've made once. Um, Wear comfortable clothing so that your arm, your upper arm is available for uh, donating. Uh, sometimes uh, we forget and then we get to the site and you might have some difficulty accessing your upper arm uh, to donate your blood. So just wear comfortable clothes and maybe uh, layer up in a t-shirt and then a, a zip up shirt or sweater that you can remove uh, for e easy access. Thank you so much, Dr. Monique. That was really, really helpful. I'll make sure in the days leading up to the blood drive to cut back on the caffeine and the coffee a little bit. Just, just a little bit though. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, uh, we're coming towards the end of our time together. So I wanted to invite each of our guests to share any final thoughts or any final tips with our audience if they had any. First, Dr. Monique. Yeah, I really want to encourage everyone to come out and support uh, the We Love You's mission uh, and donate blood and, and give a, a meaningful gift, one that can impact uh, several lives. Uh, one blood donation can save up to three lives, so it's really important that all of us chip in as much as we can to help uh, the greater good of the uh, community. But also, too, um, because blood type O negative is a, the universal donor to all blood types, uh, it's also very rare in the general population, but it's commonly found among uh, Blacks and Latinos, Hispanic populations. So if we would all, you know, chip out, chip in, excuse me, and, and join and participate to make sure that the the blood banks and the hospital centers have the reserves that they need on hand for uh, the emergencies for not just for those who, who are in the hospitals that need them, but also for any one of us that can be uh, on the recipient end at any, any point in time. Thank you, Dr. Monique. We appreciate the call to action and as well as the we love you plug that you had there at the beginning. I did catch that. What about you, Valerie? Do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? I really hope that after hearing this, um, this interview between um, Dr. Monique and myself that people have definitely learned and hopefully are more comfortable with donating blood. It's definitely, it's one of those things that you're, you're doing it for the benefit of others. And it's also a really feel good thing to do. Um, there are so many different fun facts and myths and everything that people can talk about, but you won't hear anything unless you don't start the conversation. And that's, that's what this piece is. It's to start the conversation and have people realize that the best gift we can do is try and help somebody else. And it's so easy to, to go and donate blood or even host your own blood drive. Um, along with donating since I was 16, I, for the past five years, been holding my own blood drive. So it's very easy to, to really get involved and, and help the, the people around you and even people in other areas. Um, a lot of times when blood is donated, so we're donating here in New Windsor, the blood can be used locally or it can be sent all the way up to Albany or Buffalo. And it's a wider outreach than most people realize. Thank you, Valerie, we appreciate it. And thank you both of our guest speakers for joining us tonight. We appreciate the important, valuable and helpful words that you gave to us in regards to the need for blood donations, as well as different tips and tricks for uh, what we can do to prepare for donations. Now. 
for those who would like to participate, again, We Love You will be holding blood drives on February 19th. To find a We Love You location near you for the blood drive, go to We Love You, the letter U, USA.org. That's We Love You, USA.org. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, and we love you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us.